What's up everybody, this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a quick tip on how to save a session that's went to shit. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra, Craftmaster Productions, Studio1Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials and sign up for your premium membership for exclusive to bonus content and exclusive tutorials. Now, um, in the spirit of all that, I'm getting ready to drop today's tutorial. And the session that I'm using has just went completely to shit. I don't know what's wrong with it, but if I, pr if I was to press play on this, um, what would happen is I'd get to about the ninth bar and everything just starts going nuts and it won't play past the ninth bar. And it just sound it sounds worse than the CD skipping. It sounds like, it sounds like the computer skipping. So I still, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna freak out, um, and destroy everything. I always think it's funny. Like when I see them, you see the memes, a lot of them are FL Studio memes where it's like, you know, it's somebody crying and it's like, oh, you know, when you forget to save your project or, you know, when, you know, when your computer crashes or whatever, like you never lose your music. You can always get it back. Um, this is one of the ways I'm going to show you. So I've, I've been going through here and I'm just renaming all of my MIDI right now because what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to wind up take taking all this midi um and putting it in the dropbox for the for the premium subscribers so they can go ahead and have this session to follow along with during the tutorial but also i'm i need it for myself so that i can rebuild this session because whatever happened in this session here it is just it's not going to fix itself and i need to um I need to be able to to bring this session back to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these. First of all, go to event after I've renamed them. I'm going to go to event and I'm going to press merge events. And what that's going to do is that's just going to make I'm going to drag these out so that all of these tracks have the same starting point and the same ending point. So now that I have all of all of this setup i'm going to go to a folder that i have saved in my browser and it is called dropbox it's where i keep the stuff for the site i go to studio one tutorials and this is actually if if you become if you become a member to the site you actually this folder right here you actually get access to everything that everything that i put in here so it is definitely um beneficial beyond just just watching videos and things of that nature but anyhow let me go ahead and just make a new folder and this is the you needed me tutorial and then this is this is good for you guys too if you ever want to um you know if you make a killer melody or drum pattern and you want to save it to be able to use it on a different um song all you have to do is highlight all of it hold down the alt key and drag it to a folder that you'd like to save it to it's, it's important that you that you hold down the alt key because if you don't it's going to save it as a music loop see that but if you press alt it's going to save it as a midi file um and then you just go ahead and drag it in that folder. Now, as you can see, all you got to do is take this and drag it out onto your desk or your arrange window and everything will be there labeled the way that you had it. Um, so I've got the MIDI from from this session. That's all fine. Now I just need to. Um, you're probably thinking like, well, yeah, the MIDI's fine, but how are you going to remember all, all your settings that you had on your on your um on your effects channels and on your VSTs. All I'm going to do here is you see, I already did it here. I'm just going to click store preset and make a preset for, for each one of these. So then all I have to remember is that Vox two was this VST 
that Vox One was this VST. Then I'll go to here. I'll go to the bell pad, and I'll just store this preset. I'll name it bell pad. This one here, store preset, name it pad. Let's see, Omnisphere, this was the base. So I'll just go ahead, store preset. All right, and then the drums. If you wanted to, you could you could do the same thing, store the presets, but um, I know I'm gonna remember the drums and you guys don't need to see me store all those presets. Now, for the effects, um, all you gotta do is the same thing, go here. See, I have, I have three FO, LFO tools on this. So go here and let's see here, where is it? Um, Scroll down to the bottom and see where it says store FX chain. Let's go ahead, store FX chain, and this will be base LFO. And then right here, I'll store this FX chain, name it pad LFO, and go here. store effects chain and label it bell pad LFO boom so now and go ahead and close this and I'm super confident about this I don't, I'm only, I don't even need to save my changes Just use this. Let's see, we're at one eleven. here drag this down to omnisphere let's see we didn't use silence let's see the pad those are on contact these were both on Nexus, and this is on Omnisphere. So I go ahead and delete these. Just go ahead, remove selected tracks and instruments. I don't need any of this or any of that. Remove selected tracks and instruments. Now I just got to go to Omnisphere, and I'll go ahead and bring up the preset that I had. Where is it? So that's from the session there. Go ahead and bring up this preset. And these are all the exact same settings from the from the previous session. So it's the same preset that I had in there before. And then right here, I got contact loaded up. Go ahead and put in Vox one. And I'll load up contact again on this one. And you see, it doesn't matter. Like, like for example, in contact, what, what you have already loaded, it'll just go ahead and change. Like if you save a preset like that, it'll it'll change it to 
you know, whatever library you were, you know, you were using along with um, the preset and any of the effects that you had inside of contact that were running. Now we just need to make sure that we get our LFO tool on. So we got base LFO. And then we add, make sure that you press this down arrow to pull up your presets, not the plus. Um, let's go ahead and get that bell pad LFO in. And then get that pad LFO in. And we should have something pretty close. Let's see. All right, so it looks like problem is solved. I can go ahead and finish this tutorial right now. If you guys want to check out this tutorial, this is a premium tutorial that's going on the Studio One tutorial site. I'm going to be going over the easiest way to do that side chain base and how to also use that technique on pads for a different texture. So appreciate you guys stopping by, checking this out. I hope this will help you out if you wind up having sessions that have been corrupted in the past. You can still open and just, you know, maybe you haven't thought about a solution like this. You know, I'm pretty good um, from just all these years of stuff messing up on me of um, thinking about workarounds and things like that. So remember, Concrete Zebra, thank you for you guys' subscription. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. Stop by StudioOneTutorials.com. Sign up to the free mailing list so you can keep up with everything that's going on. We will see you all on the next one.